Hello, my name is Camilo. Welcome to the AI Explained for Business series, where in five minutes we explain AI concepts using a business perspective. If you have questions or concepts you need help with, please ask them in the comments. I'll go through them. Also, if you find this interesting, also subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of new topics as we go through them. So, in today's video, we're going to be tackling a second common question that I just received this week. You may have heard from generative AI models that some are encoding, some are decoding, and some are encoding decoding. Sounds like a tongue twister. So let's uh, go through it and see what all of this means. It all began with the transformer. You may have heard in uh, that this uh, is a critical concept in the generative space. This is an architectural pattern that was initially used for language translation. And as you see in the, in the right there, that is the overall diagram of its architecture. It may seem intimidating, but it is not. It, to put it in layman's terms, it has two pieces of the puzzle. The first one is the encoding piece, which is the one in the left which basically transforms your question or your need to, tr to translate a message into basic, basic tokens that can be used by the transformer and then be decoded with the second piece of that uh, uh, model and basically get the response in the new language. That was the original intent of the, of the transformer. You can Google the original paper. It is called Attention is All You Need it's small, I recommend it. It's, uh, it's not that uh, long. And you'll hear an, uh, a little bit more about the underneath uh, architecture of this model. But let's go back to a business perspective. First, what is an encoding? So that initial piece generated a lot of new models. The basic concepts behind an encoding type model is that it is designed to learn what you're asking Usually, as you can see here in the, in the lower part of, of, the, of the picture, usually the prompts are long. And the, what you require in the model is to basically do an analysis, a synthesis, analyze tone, uh, look for entities, classify. And usually the responses of these encoding type models is usually brief. It's very sharp. It's basically you give it all this text and you say, go look into it, get the, the get an answer for this complex, but uh, very precise question, and I'll give you back a prompt, uh, response, I'm sorry. Some examples like uh, that are available uh, are uh, Google's BERT, or even the IBM Slate model, which was announced a couple of weeks ago in the, in, in the July timeframe of 2023 and uh, these encoder type models are, have uh, a lot of use especially in business because the use cases in business uh, most of the times we're finding they begin with an encoding type question like figuring out uh, something about a, a long long text imagine say, a customer service call analysis imagine reading a transcript of that and extracting the, the core concepts there. Then there's another model uh, which evolved and it's uh, very popular, which is the decoding style model. GPT, you may have heard about the GPT family of models. Those are all decoding models. And uh, they take uh, advantage of the second part of this uh, uh, architecture. So you give it a small prompt and that small prompt gets processed by the model and it generates a long response. It could be a long response like, tell me about the civil war. If you ask uh, ChatGPT, I'll give you a long, long response around it. There are some scenarios which are generative in nature and these type of models have uh, displayed emerging properties as they increase in size. So it's definitely a space we're looking at uh, quite a bit. And uh, if you can see here in the diagram in the bottom part, 
you'll see that usually the interaction with them is you have a small prompt and you get a long response. And then you have the, the combo, the encoder decoder, which we were the original transformer. And it basically uses, combines both strategies in order. So initially it does the encoding, it has a hidden state layer in between, and then it does the decoding. Usually it's best used when it's a complex uh, input versus output sequence. So maybe the length of the input and output do not match and the concepts can be totally different. So this hidden layer, this pivot style architecture is best for use cases like, uh, uh, like language translation and summarization. Some uh, great examples of uh, encoder-decoder models are BART and T5. So it's definitely something I would encourage you to take a look and uh, learn more about it. If you have more questions around these uh, concepts, do let me know, and we'll see you on the next uh, video. So thank you.